ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಕಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟುಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ಸಂಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಸೋ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ in the joint auspicious thing between Indian Institute of World Culture and Percussive Arts Centre. We would like to present a lecture demonstration and question and answer session. Is music universal? Is that a subject given? It's led by our own Shri Vidwan Shri B.C. Manjunath and Prof. Ned McGowan from Netherlands. I, I can't tell he's only from Netherlands, he's worldwide. He's, he's been in U.S., he's been in Netherlands, he's in several other places. I had you I would like to give a warm welcome to Shri B.C. Manjunath and Meknit Kovod. I will just introduce them in few words because we would like to see more of the program than actually all this. B.C. Manjunath, a competent and dynamic artist with outstanding credentials. He is a recipient of several acclaimed awards, noteworthy track record performances at prestigious platforms in India and abroad and he has performed with world-renowned artists of different genre. A very sensitive musician and a human. He is basically a more human being. I respect him for that. He he is capable or he has been performing with Indian classical music, world music, modern jazz, contemporary dance, contemporary music, different fusion things and many 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 more styles. He is a composer, innovator, discoverer of many unique rhythm cycles such as Fibikoni Thala, Triangular Numbers Thala, Kuru Kripa Thala, and many 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 more talas which is yet to name them probably you will get uh, manjunath version 1 manjunath version 2 manjunath version 3 several other things i wish him to make at least 108 so that it will match the talas <laughs> ashtotrashta talas he comes from a very big musical lineage he is the son of sangeeta vidyanidhi dr b k chandramouli a veteran mrudangam artist and a very great guru and a human learn from very great uh, gurus like ganakula bhushana k n krishnamurthy sir and padma shri sangeeta kalanidhi dr t k murthy sir with all this he has got several many 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 awards and recognitions i'll just name a few of them ustad bismillah khan yuva puraskar award ganakala shri award swaralaya bharati award astana vidwan of kanchi kamakoti a great artist of all india radio and doordarshan he has got a simana endowment prize from percussive art center itself in 2005 i give a very warm welcome to shri anjana net professor net mcgowan is a composer flutist researcher and a teacher born in united states and living in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Known for rhythmic vitality and technical virtuosity, his music has won awards, many, many awards, and been performed in Carnegie Hall and several big, big auditoriums in the entire world. As a flautist, he plays classical, contemporary, improvisation of the concert internationally, and he has been, he has a very special love for the contrabass flute 
In 2016, he released a big album, The Alt of the Contrabass Flute. Ned McGowan is a pearl ostrich too, playing the pearl PFC 905 contrabass flute. Ned is the head of the artistic research and teaches compositions and advanced rhythms and pulse. He is currently a PhD candidate at the Leiden University and in the doctorate's program. He holds degrees in composition for Royal Conservatory and a huge in a flute and Cleveland Institute of Music and the San Francisco Conservatory Music. He, he was awarded the Alumni Achievement Award from the Cleveland Institute of Music. He is the founder and director of International Rhythm Course, a series of courses in address and India dedicated to learning, exploring and performing rhythm. We, on behalf of both organizations, I give a warm welcome and you are welcome, sir. Thank you. In the audience, we, big, big, we see a big, big stalwarts in the thing. Madam Ramamani Madam is here. I give her a very warm welcome. HS Anasuya Madam. Our dear Arkali Venkates sir. I see the mastery of different rhythms, Karthik Mani. Karthik Mani sir is here. And I also see our great Gatham Vidwan Narayan Murthy sir here in the album. I do welcome all these stalwarts. Please be seated. Any question and answers you can ask in the end of the concert. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Great to see you all here bright and early on a Sunday morning um, for this uh, event of music and ideas. And um, first, I would like to thank Dr. Tia Satavati for our invitation. Thank you so much. Also, Arkali Venkatesh and Sri T.S. Krishnamurti for the invitation. It's really great to be here. Um, also, big thanks to the Indian Institute of World Culture and the Percussive Arts Center. So, uh, we understand um, without these great organizations, these kinds of events could not take place. So thank you for that. <clears throat> so I've been coming to India for almost 20 years, or more than 20 years actually. And, um, and often it is said, music is the one universal language on the planet. So, I, I, and I've, I've always, always thinking about that. And uh, as a Westerner coming here, and then listening to Carnatic music, which <clears throat> in the beginning I didn't, did not understand anything about. And I, I thought, well, this is a foreign language to me, so how is this universal? So I've been thinking about this for many years. <clears throat> and so I've, I, I came up with a perspective on it. And I'd like to share that with you today. Um, and um, uh, I, I will present my ideas, uh, hopefully fairly quickly, then we will play some music. And in the end, I look forward to your your ideas, your questions, comments, and uh, a discussion about this topic. Um, so, but, um, you know, let's look at the, this idea of universality in music. So, does music exist in all cultures? Yes. Do people around the world enjoy music? Yes. <laughs> Does music communicate information? Yes. yes, great. 
Is music understood the same by everybody? No. Correct. So already we come to a little bit of a question about this idea of universality in music. So can I understand music in the same way? So we can ask ourselves, well, what, what does music communicate? For example, could we ask someone to bring us a glass of water by playing music? Could I just play some notes on my flute and then somebody understands, oh, I have to bring a glass of water? Obviously, the question is no, right? <laughs> okay. I want to hear about that. <laughs> Maybe if you play like as if you need a drink of water. <laughs> um, I want to present a few quotes by some famous composers in the West. Uh, Igor Stravinsky originally said that music essentially is essentially powerless to express anything at all. He said this when he, in, when he was young. And, um, and funny enough, the world sort of had a crisis about this phrase and it was quoted and misquoted and finally he said this has gone way too far there's not not what I meant and then he said later on music expresses itself so now it, it has a different idea than we are not trying to communicate maybe tangible ideas, but we're expressing music, and so we live in a different world. If we look at what Leonard Bernstein said, famous conductor and composer, he said, music is a totally metaphorical language, carrying meaning beyond the literal, the tangible. So he was saying that music is not about these kinds of specific things, like passing me a glass of water, but it's it's in other things and I someone I also read that he said that music is the metaphorical language of our interior lives and I really like that that quote because that really that resonates with how it is for me music is a internal language which I speak with myself and I'm always comparing that language with the way other people speak it but it's very personal. And then we have Ricardo Nova, who some of you might know, is uh, also a composer from the West who has worked a lot uh, here in India and studied. And I was speaking with him just yesterday about this. And he wrote, instead of music being a language, it is more that language has musical elements, right? So. Maybe as I'm speaking the words right now, you may be hearing music. And we have composers who have done that, uh, who have done used repetition of words where it transcends the meaning of the words and starts to become music unto itself. So that's a very interesting perspective. Uh, feel free to butt in whenever yes, you... I would uh, like to say something about this. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I was just, uh, it's interesting that I was having a conversation with, uh, with Lavanya uh, just before coming here. And then we were talking about uh, how to experience music, you know, once we hit 30 or 40 or whatever. I feel that uh, that's the moment that we should start concentrating on going inside ourselves and stop looking outside. Because uh, music is all about, uh, for me, like trying to tell a story for ourselves, uh, like you said, uh, um, feeling the metaphors, like like comparing it with the metaphors of like, okay, I'm practicing now, uh, and then okay, so I feel this like walking in a in a uh, uh, like a mountain on a mountain or like swimming, and then so this is very valid. Uh, like we didn't even discuss this point, and then we were talking exactly the same thing in um, like ten minutes apart from each other, right? <laughs> so that's what I wanted to say, you know. Yeah, I saw you respond to that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so we come back to this question, is music universal? Well, 
Finally, I just think that the question is not a good, not a proper question. That it's worded too broadly to answer definitively. Because there just, there's too much going on, too many facets. And this is what I'd like to do right now is, is break apart and look at some of those facets. And basically what I feel is that music speaks on many levels, not all of which are universal. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to break it up into those levels, and we're going to explore them. So let's do that. And we will start with, indeed, the universal level. So we could ask ourselves, well, what is universal among people? Right? We all have physical bodies. We eat. We sleep. We feel pain. We have emotions. Right? These are things we all have, whatever wherever culture we come from. Um, we also move to rhythm. So if you play music for a child, they just start moving. This is natural. We've all seen this. We've all experienced it. As a matter of fact, science has also uh, studied that. And what they've studied is that when we are listening to rhythmic pieces, <clears throat> it's triggering the motoric parts of the brain, which are the parts of the brain which are making us move. So even if we are sitting still and we are listening to rhythmic music, we are also uh, feeling physical feelings of, of motion. So this is something that we all have. It's, it's inherent in the way the human body works. Um, we also sing melodies, right? All cultures have melodies. So indeed, these things are universal, yes, they exist. <clears throat> now let's move to the next level. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is what I wanted to say, yeah. They do exist, but we don't move the same way, right? Our dances are different. The way we move is very different around the world, even though we do move. And we don't sing the same melodies. So now, all of a sudden, the existence of something is universal, but the meaning of it and the way it works is not universal. And there are two other levels which might help explain this. First one is the cultural level, right? So we all come from a culture. Come, you come from India, I come from the West, I, I, I've uh, from the United States, I was born, I've, I've lived more than half my life in the Netherlands. So I have all these influences from my culture. Um, and that has a big influence, of course, on the kind of music I make. So what are some of the aspects that define a culture? We have our customs, we have our religions, we have the rhythms we play. So the rhythms we play in the West are different than the rhythms we have here in India. Um, the melodies we sing, right? So, as I said, it's also very different. Also, there's the language, right? So, the, the, the actual spoken language and the texts are different. And so, uh, you know, if you don't understand the language, how can you understand what's being sung about, right? If, uh, the, the texts are not understandable. If I listen to Carnatic music, which has a devotional meaning to the text, and I just simply do not understand that, then I will not understand the music in the same way as someone who does understand the text. So already, the existence of these different languages, and speaking them or not, is making these divisions and creating a non-universality to music. So is this level universal? Absolutely not. It's very local and very regionalized. And obviously, you all understand that. When you listen to music from the West, it can also be very perplexing to you. And uh, I know for myself, um, I was attracted to the rhythm of Carnatic music in the beginning. But the more I listened to Carnatic music, the more I began to understand and love the raga and the, and the melody and the compositions. So I, uh, uh, the more I understand it, the more I enjoy it. 
And that can also go for you and music from the West, too. I can say something. Please, yeah. Yeah. Uh, coming to this point, uh, just like uh, Ned was saying about how he feels uh, Carnatic music, how he started feeling it, and then I'm sure uh, there is a lot of progression in that feeling when you play. Uh, for me also, you know, uh, before I went to West, uh, say, around 2000 uh, years 2000 uh, there was a kind of like a, a myth inside me that uh, I could relate to any kind of rhythm in the world you know like I'm the champion probably the best in the rhythms so the moment I went there and uh, Ned and five other friends they had a group called Bhedam so what happened they played me the music they knew that I could understand a lot of stuff, but the moment they played the music, I could not relate to even one little rhythmic structure in it. I could not understand where actually the pulse was. I couldn't understand what the rhythmic cycle was. I could not even understand what the laya was. So, we are so much used to listen to the linear rhythm or the linear music uh, to our ears. So when it is combined, in a different way, it was so hard for me to even uh, understand a tiny little bit. So it took a lot of time. But having the knowledge of Carnatic music helped me understand that probably the quickest. So I, what I would like to say is uh, cultural level is certainly there. And then the way we learn things here may not assist us to understand other things. But it will certainly help us. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the third level, the personal level, <clears throat> right? I am my own person, I have my own experiences, my own thoughts and emotions, right? Every person is unique. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the neuroscientist David Eagleman says that there are no two brains in the history of mankind that are alike, right? So it's a kind of obvious but funny phrase, but it, it, it tells us how we are all unique wherever we come from. As a matter of fact, you could grow up in the same village and be born at the same time as a good friend of yours. You live right next to each other and you grow up your entire lives and you could still argue about which music is good or which is bad or, you know, so you, in a way you come from the same culture, the same location, same age, everything same, maybe different families, of course, and then you still have differences. So all of a sudden now we start to see that the individual also has a, a strong identity and that plays a large role in this equation of how we understand music. <clears throat> and it is a matter of fact, that's the beauty of friendship or marriage, is how we are continuously exploring each other's identities and learning about each other and constantly surprising each other. I, I, I'm sure all of you have this same experience with, with people close to you, that you're continually learning more about each other and, also, and continually being different. <clears throat> There are always more levels to learn. So, is this universal, the personal level? No, absolutely not, by definition. It could be, maybe that's the, the opposite of universal, would be the personal. So, now we start to understand that music is communicating on all three levels all the time. The universal, so we have elements that speak to all of us, the cultural, so the, the, the aspects of the music which have emerged out of the cultural identity and belief and customs and practices, and the personal. What do I do? What do I think? And what does someone else? You know, we even, even if we are the same in so many ways, we are still all very different. And so I can listen to and understand any piece of music from these three perspectives. 
And that's an interesting exercise for you when you're listening to any piece of music, is to under, try to, to take it apart and think about, okay, what, what, is, what is just uh, universally joyful about this piece? What is culturally related to a culture which has developed its own taste and uh, way of working? And what are the things that are being expressed by the individual musicians who have either composed or performed the piece, right? They also are expressing their own uh, individuality. So I may enjoy Indian rhythms and melodies very much, but I don't interpret them the same as someone from India who grew up associating their functions in music and society. So uh, if I didn't grow up listening to a certain raga at a certain time of the day, I don't associate it with that time. And so these are the, these are the cultural elements which, which can be very difficult to understand. I always experience things from my perspective according to my own inner language and I create my interpretation based on my reality. Does this all make sense to you? <laughs> Great. Are there any questions about this till now? Okay. Well, please don't hesitate. Um, in the, I just want to take these ideas one step further into a simple little question. <laughs> what is the meaning of art? Yeah, which it's a kind of uh, intimidating question, but at a certain point, uh, maybe 10 years ago, I started to have an idea about that, what it is for me. And uh, obviously other people have said this, which is that the meaning of art is to explore the human condition. And I, I remember hearing about this when I was in high school, and I, of course I didn't understand it at all. But now, now I, un I have, at least I think I understand it. Um, and it goes like this, that we, when we experience art from someone else, we are learning how humans can exist. So we're learning about the way they think about things, the way they see possibilities, the way they play their instrument. If I, if I hear a really great violinist, I, I'm amazed that, that a human being can do that. So, when you hear a composition by myself, by me, you understand something about the way I am, the way I hear music and think of its expressive possibilities. You also hear the culture where I come from and also universal elements in the music. But you are, you are hearing, you're learning something about me when you listen to a piece of music by me. Um, so when I hear the beautiful vocalists of Carnatic music, I understand something about their heart and what it is that they want to express. I also hear the composition, I hear the culture, I hear all of these things, but I also hear the individuality. And, and when I'm hearing that, I'm also having that inner dialogue with myself, exploring, well, is that inside of me? How am I similar or different to that? And I think this is where, where this, the meaning from art comes from, is it is a, is a self-enriching process to listen to something and compare it with our own feelings. And when we do that, we are not only learning about the other person, but we're learning about ourselves. And we're learning about how something works with us. And then, hmm, we've filled another piece of the puzzle in about who we are. When I hear the fast and sometimes complex rhythms of B.C. Manjunath, I learn about how he thinks about these structures. And I'm often amazed that a human being can have that kind of clarity of mathematics and rhythm and structure and expression. And um, with the vocalists and, and the percussion, I experience how humans can be, and I compare that to myself, seeing if I have those qualities too, in some way, or if I can develop them, if they're close by or far away. And, um, and, and that is the, for me, the process which is so uh, 
lifelong enriching about listening to music is I'm learning about other people, about the way they are through their music. Okay. Are there any questions or comments, agreements or disagreements about that? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, yeah. We, uh, uh, for example, I've composed a concerto for Indian percussion, which is played by uh, uh, Indian instruments with a Western orchestra. Um, we haven't, uh, I haven't seen the Indian instruments become as integral in the West as the violin has become in India. That has not happened yet. But um, uh, it might not happen with the, with the instrument, but it might happen with rhythm, for example. Right? So the, this Carnatic rhythm, the Indian approach to rhythm is, is really having a big influence in, in Europe and the United States. And uh, that's just getting started. And I think it's going to grow even more in the coming generations. So, um, yeah. Shall we have some music? <laughs> We have a number of pieces to play for you which explore the West in India um, and uh, from different perspectives. So we're going to kind of present a little bit of a range from, uh, from new pieces to old pieces to Carnatic pieces and new Carnatic pieces. So um, um, we will go through it together and I will talk a little bit about each piece. Uh, this next, the first piece we will play uh, is called Benson Town because that's where I was staying, uh, that neighborhood, when I wrote this, when uh, Manju and I, we composed this piece together. So um, it was a process of thinking of rhythms together, thinking of the notes, talking about the form, uh, a real integral process between the two of us. Uh, I will play the contrabass flute. Yeah, this is the contrabass flute. Uh, it's just a flute, actually, <laughs> just a really big one. And uh, um, maybe some of you have seen me play it before here. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what else I could say about it, except that it's very low. Um, do you have any questions about the flute? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So wow. this is the normal Western key flute. And you can see that the, the big flute is maybe, it's about four times longer than this one, which makes it, in this case, two octaves lower. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also have the piccolo, which I will play, which is one octave higher than the flute. It's, it's about half as long. And uh, uh, so the, uh, really simply, the smaller the instrument, the higher the pitch. And the, lower, the bigger the instrument, the lower the pitch. Does it apply to the humans as well? Or? <laughs> That's a good mystery, huh? Yeah. Sometimes you have really small people with really low really voices, low voice, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know.
Do 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 do
Thank you very much. Um, of course, this was a, a piece heavily influenced uh, by rhythmically by B.C. Manjunat, and we, uh, yes, hopefully you could hear all the the rhythmic games going on in seven and uh, different speeds. So um, next we will do a composition by myself called Cycle Games, <clears throat> and. Uh, 
This is a piece that's been, well, heavily inspired, influenced by the, the art of konoko, the vocal percussion. So this is a vocal percussion piece. <clears throat> However, uh, as far as I'm, my experiences in Indian music, most often the rhythmic line is a unison line, which is then doubled by other musicians. And uh, one of the main uh, uh, traits of Western classical music is multiple voices at the same time. And also the, the, the idea of counterpoint, where you can have voices um, going different than each other, not in unison, and complementing each other, and echoing each other, and doing all kinds of things. So, um, so what I've done as a composer is I've, I've taken this vocal percussion art form, and then I've done it, uh, I've composed a piece uh, in using this Western idea of counterpoint. And basically I did that by taking two rhythmic, uh, two uh, cycles and putting them against each other. So you, the piece is constantly, one layer is in four and the other layer is in seven the whole time. And then they're repeating uh, materials that are similar uh, the whole time. So this is a, an example of a, of, a, of a Western contemporary composition which is really influenced by uh, Indian ideas. Dim, 
da talk about this piece yeah, uh, you might be surprised uh, to hear something like this uh, in the context totally out of the context <laughs> right yeah. like the context is being this composition over here the out of, co out of context is this composition is being played on this instrument by and that to the raga that is known to be played or sung only by Carnatic musicians. I'm so proud of Ned that he learned this composition. We will not announce which composition is it. It is, so just listen to it. And I'm sure, ah, great, you didn't give away the name of the composition. 
<laughs> so let's try how it goes. Yes.
ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತಲ್ವಾ ಇದಕ್ಕೇನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೆನೇಷನ್ ಬೇಡ ಒಂದ ನಮ್ಮ ತ್ಯಾಗರಾಜರು ಸೊ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಐ ಐ ಆಮ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೃತಿ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲೇಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸಮಹಾವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಫೌಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಮಕಾಸ್ ಎ ಲಿಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸರ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಯ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಚೋಸನ್ ಬೈ ನೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ವಾಟ್ ವರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ Uh, what was going on in your mind when you were learning this? Absolutely. It's, there's nothing more scary than playing Carnatic music <laughs> for a bunch of Carnatic musicians. Huh? <laughs> so uh, um, I, I, I just, uh, I, I, I know I'm playing all kinds of things wrong and the raga is maybe not the way it should be. Um, uh, but uh, I love the piece and I have my own relationship with it. So I, I've learned um, from Dr. Suma Sudindra. She taught me this piece. And so I learned it from her. And, um, and that was last year. And, and, and now I play it in my own way. And I'm not sure what to, what to, what to make out of that. But um, it's a little bit of a test, a tryout. But I played it. What I played for, would it have been more uh, enjoyable if Ah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <coughs> no, that's what I personally felt. No? Yeah. I could have enjoyed it better mm. had it been at a higher pitch. Yeah. Next time. Can a contrabass be one octave higher? Then it is um, not a contrabass. Uh, uh, <laughs> on the other flutes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, not really. I play it on your, I can switch flutes maybe, yeah. Yeah, you, okay. yeah. you were explaining when you were explaining you said if you don't know the sahitya the lyrics one yeah. cannot enjoy the music okay mm. if you play this in amsterdam or wherever in the country people will enjoy they don't know what it is vandanamo so what matters is the the journey of the nada the swara and the beauty how you are enjoying that counts so many times we don't know the language whether it has a language first piece you played we didn't know whether there was a language in there no it may be only swaras yeah. so sorry when you know the lyrics you can enjoy better if you play in south definitely vandanamo no if you play in orissa or manipur nagaland they yeah. may not do sahitya mm. what they enjoy is the music that the journey of the nada mm. whatever you play mm. any anybody plays in on any instrument mm. the music is music mm. for me mm. uh, if you know lyrics i will enjoy more than that but even other ways we enjoy it was fantastic thank you okay. thank you no no take take them take the microphone i almost said metronome so that they could hear you <laughs> thank you uh one thing which i found was uh, for the the bass flute we had we had a higher octave mridangam right so what how would it sound if we had a bass a, a one octave lower mridangam i i i, I don't know <laughs> the the challenges with it is i know about it but uh, from a sound perspective right so uh, how would it sound and would that make a difference for uh, the listening experience uh, well i would say that uh, uh, a contrabass uh, of course you can uh, play it based out of b as tonic right if you want to like uh, the the bass uh, uh, shruti yeah now it is e uh-huh. if you can make a b as tonic oh b as tonic yeah, yeah and then uh, maybe if i use the lower uh, pitch mridangam uh, yeah we could try that yeah because this is in e and then if you don't have the uh, i have not seen a one octave or lower e mridangam in my life yet <laughs> <laughs> that is that is one of the thought Next. process which i had and maybe we should use something like a kanjira for that ah, <laughs> there you go 100% biased idea <laughs> personal agenda yeah <laughs>
<laughs> okay, uh, we have just two more pieces to play. Uh, one is uh, a brand, brand, brand new piece that is composed by uh, our dear Anur Anantakrishna Sharmasar. He uh, fondly known as Shibu sir. He uh, actually we did this uh, Indian uh, international, uh, not Indian, sorry, international rhythm course, uh, and then uh, we had uh, participants from uh, Europe and. Uh, uh, we invited few uh, guest lecturers and one of them was uh, Shivu sir. So precisely for this ensemble, it is an ensemble piece uh, with uh, two flutes, a bass guitar, uh, clarinet and, uh, and keys and uh, mridangam and veena. Uh, but now we are trying to play it as a duo version, uh, which might be a little bit of, uh, I don't know how it sounds, but. Uh, we're going to try. Yesterday was the first time that we played this in the concert, so this is the second time. And uh, interestingly, this is also a very rhythmically challenging piece because uh, it is in Mishra Gati. So it goes, taka timbe takita, taka timbe takita. Ta. So I'll just tell you how the first phrase goes when the melody starts. Ta ding 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 na. Ta ding 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 na. Ta dim 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 tam. Ta ta ka din da ta dim 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 tam. Ta ta ka din da ta dim 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 ta ki ta ding ta ka din da ta ki ta ding ta ding 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 ta ki ta ding ta ka din da ta ki ta ding ta. That's how it starts. This is only the beginning. <laughs> you will see what happens afterwards. Let's try. Yes, please. You want to repeat?
That's the magic of Shivu sir. Huh? <laughs> okay, we come to the last piece, uh, which is about six minutes. That's it. Yeah, um, for this last piece, we have a couple of guest artists. Laurent Pickles. And Gilles Carlier. Where is Gilles? Gilles? Oh, there he is. Hi. Backstage. So last year, I, I composed a concerto for BC Manjunat. Uh, with, for an ensemble in the Netherlands, and a uh, three-movement concerto, and um, uh, it was a mix of contemporary Western classical music, and, um, and well, the last movement, I composed a, a fun tilana for this. Um, so, I listened to some tilanas, and then uh, I made my own version. Tragadum, 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 tragadum
or comments or uh, did that sound like a tilana to you? <laughs> Was it different than an Indian tilana? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, Namaskara. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the Percussive Art Center and the Indian Institute of World Culture for hosting this wonderful event. And uh, I would also like to thank all the people who have assembled here. Uh, it was sharp 8.30 program. And uh, I was late. I, I should feel very, very bad and sad that I missed the initial five minutes of the program. And uh, thanks for all of you coming over on a Sunday morning and listening to this. This is a culture which in Bangalore we want to create. And this is something really, really amazing to see all of you joining here. And personally, I would like to thank Satyavati Madam for asking me and telling me that you need to do the you need to propose the vote of thanks for this event today for this program and i'm really really blessed and honored when i came uh, professor ned uh, was talking about how we experience the music 
right so the different perspectives and the he he used very interesting terminologies of i would say an ac acronym which we all can take forward is u c p u is universal 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 and uh, c is the cultural and the p is the personal so i think all of us I mean, it's true, right? So all of us look at it in uh, in these three aspects wherever we go, whatever we listen to, whatever in fact we do in our lives. That was a very interesting. As a professor, I think uh, that was very well thought, and his experience kind of came in 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 explaining the the thought process of how we look at the music. Talked about Manju also mentioned the instance where. Uh, uh the different arrangements how it can kind of uh, bring differences and also kind of tick you off in certain instances but knowing one one part of one form of music very well helps in uh, understanding the other forms in fact in one of the the programs in yesterday uh dr trichy shankaran sir was also mentioning when you try to indulge into other forms of music one has to be really really well versed with one form right so that i think both professor ned as well as uh, bc manjunath have one thing in common they have they know their system extremely well which makes them <laughs> diversify their thoughts and uh, kind of come together and collaborate then talking about the music part as a as a student of music one thing which i really got amazed i'm not sure or most of you might have seen it laya one person's rhythm and another person's rhythm is different every one of us will be different i was seeing is there any aid like a metronome or something which is there the first thing which i noticed when the benson town was played there was absolutely nothing and they were on the beat every single time i think this this aspect itself i would say it requires a standing ovation <laughs> thank you if you don't mind it was something amazing being on the beat on a cycle of 7 every time there was this there was a, a structure which was woven i we could see the carnatic uh, structures coming in like taka dina dim taka dina dim ta ka dina dim and uh, there were structures similar to like what he uh, ned was telling the ucp part i interpret i understand it at as a small bit of raga lapana small bit of the pallavi structure coming in small bit of improvisation where uh, manju was Uh, having a, a seven groove and then kind of a, a thirmana or a, an ending a core way which came which was which is very well built in into it at the other parts which we less talk about apart from all these things is the dynamics right so which we don't see much i mean i would say it's less seen in carnatic music where we we are not learning the dynamics part from the initial days we we get to know those words uh when we when we kind of start collaborating with uh, the different musicians we say ghana naya is 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 very important aspect in carnatic music but we don't learn it as is okay what is ghana naya how do we play this where do we play soft where do we play hard so some of these things i mean this was very well demonstrated uh, part of it then the the cycle games vocal percussion it it was not short of any music it was i wouldn't say it is just percussion percussive element there was music woven into it entirely 
and uh, there was so much of music there was so much of enjoyment it transported all of us to a different level and the final crescendo man and manju was talking about it's it's all about a storytelling right so we could we could see that uh, 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 kind of a, a story i mean i could imagine my own story right so it was like a a cycle race kind of a thing where we started where everybody started there was an uphill there was a downhill and finally there was a plane where people were trying to race and trying to see who can win kind of a thing so an apt apt name for cycle uh, the composition cycle games thank you thank you for that and of course vandana mu raghunandana it was played uh, i mentioned uh, it can be used for for kanjira also not with any personal agenda but i felt that <laughs> not i didn't i did not mention it as a kanjira artist definitely not <laughs> as a composer <laughs> yes and uh, mishragati composition shivu sir's uh, mishragati composition one thing which i want to talk about this is again one amazing thing is being together in a mishragati another aspects of the the when the the composition started uh, manju started with tadhim 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 but when they actually went they went lower like ta ka yeah mr chapu or seven letters or 14 letters for two beats right seven letters for two beats which is very very difficult and it doesn't come to a carnatic musician organically it it has to be learned and uh, that is something which is there are a lot of possibilities and uh, that is something which which was very very special for me personally and um, of course i enjoyed it by putting mr chapu to be honest <laughs> and not as putting mr gati but uh, that was that was one part of it then uh, again the tilana composition of it and overall it was a very very well done well conceived well thought through the execution of this program we we wholeheartedly thank uh, from both the organizations pakasi art center and the indian institute of world culture for hosting this and also for uh, coming over ned and uh, bc manjunath for giving us a wonderful treat sunday morning thank you we would like to uh, call upon uh, shrimati rama prakash the sponsor of the day to hand over the token of appreciation the three artists please for company do you please come over stage judicious usage of sound makes lot of sense that was the thing that was proved today beautiful coordination cooperation and understanding of the soul of each other's music and bringing it together in a perfect manner that was it i whole heartedly thank all the artists on stage and vidwan sri g guru prasanna one of the top most percussion artists of the country for giving his expert comments and also proposing the vote of thanks on behalf of these two organizations it has been a really pleasant sunday morning wish you all a very happy sankranti tomorrow is the festival thanks for coming namaskara once i mean i request the sponsor shrimati rama to accept a small token of our appreciation please
थैंक यू